Hey everyone, welcome back to AshDev. Today, we're taking a break from our usual talk about Unity and game development to explore something fascinating. How Saturn ended up with those amazing rings. Around 400 million years ago, Saturn was just hanging out with its moons, doing its thing. But over time, something incredible happened, and those beautiful rings came into existence. To help us understand this journey, I have replicated the Saturn and its moons in Unity. We'll also do some fun experiments later in the video, so let's dive in and see how things changed with time. Basically, it's all about gravity. That's the force that keeps everything in space in place. The bigger something is, the stronger its gravity. And in space, this pulls and holds things together in amazing ways. Every object out there, like Moon, has its own gravity. If they move just right, they can get pulled into orbiting around bigger things, like planets. That's why we see moons going around planets. Now let's talk about something called the Roche Limit. This is like an invisible line around Saturn. When things get too close inside this line, the gravity is so strong that it can break them up. And that's what happened to one of the moons of Saturn. As the moon got into this Roche Limit, it started to fall apart and break into lots of smaller pieces. Here's an interesting part. The pieces spread out and make this oval shape. This is because of tidal forces. It's like a tug of war, with Saturn pulling harder on the side of the moon that's closer to it. If the moon isn't strong enough, these forces can pull it apart. If we move time forward quickly, you can see how it all changes. The pieces from the moon spread around Saturn and start going around it, forming those famous rings. And that's how Saturn got its rings. So why don't all planets have rings like Saturn? It's mostly about where their moons are. Most moons are far enough from their planets, way outside this Roche limit, so they stay whole. But Saturn's moons were just in the right spot to create those rings we all know. All right, now let's pull back the curtain and see what's making all this cool space stuff happen. So every object you see in our model, like planets and moons, has a gravity script attached to it. This script is what simulates gravity. Plus, they all have a rigid body component. This lets us apply different forces to them, making the simulation more dynamic. Let's dive into the gravity script. First thing it does is find all the other objects that also have this gravity script. Next, it grabs their rigid bodies. That's the part that lets us move them around. Then, the script calculates and applies the gravitational force to each object. This force is equal to g, m1, m2, divided by r square. Where g is gravitational constant, m1 is the mass of this object, and m2 is mass of the other object, and r is the distance between them, which is how real gravity works. Basically, it pulls all these objects towards each other, just like in real space. Another key thing here is setting up the initial velocity for moving objects. To get this right, we need two things the rigid body of the object itself, and the rigid body of the object it's orbiting, in our case, Saturn. We use these to calculate the orbital velocity. The magnitude of this orbital velocity is worked out using the formula square root of gm divided by r square, where g is gravitational constant, m is mass of the orbiting object, which is moon in our case, and r is the distance between them. As for the direction, it's set to be tangent to the line between the two objects. For us, that's between Saturn and its moon. One last twist. We have a velocity multiplier in the mix. It's usually set to 1, but we can change it for different experiments. This multiplier lets us tweak how fast or slow objects move in their orbit. And that's pretty much it. That's how we've brought gravity to life in our little virtual universe. Hey everyone, just a quick pause before we get back to our space exploration. If you like what you're seeing and don't want to miss out on more fun projects and Unity tutorials, do me a favor and hit that like button. And if you haven't already, subscribe to AshDev. It's a huge help and keeps you in the loop with everything we're doing here. And for those of you who are keen to try out this space project for yourselves, all you have to do is join our premium membership on Discord. You'll not only gain access to this project, but also a lot of other cool stuff. Now let's jump back into our little space and see what else we can discover. First thing we're going to do is mess with Saturn's mass. 
I've made sure our orbital velocity calculations are spot on for this. Now let's increase Saturn's mass. As we expect, the Moon's orbiting speed should go up too. This is because the gravitational pull gets stronger with more mass. See that? The Moon is moving faster around Saturn now. That's the power of gravity in action. Next up, let's play around with the initial velocity. What if we double it? This should be interesting. If the theory holds, the Moon won't be able to stay in orbit around Saturn. And there it goes. The Moon is moving so fast now that Saturn can't keep a hold of it, and it breaks free from the orbit. This is a great example of how speed can overcome gravity. Now, let's try the opposite. We'll reduce the Moon's initial velocity. As the Moon slows down, it can't fight Saturn's gravity anymore and starts falling towards it. Notice something interesting here. As the Moon gets closer to Saturn, it speeds up. This happens because gravity gets stronger the closer you are. It's inversely proportional to the square of the distance between two objects. The closer they are, the stronger the pull, and the faster the Moon moves. These experiments help us understand the delicate balance that keeps our universe together. It's pretty amazing stuff. Now watch what happens if I move the Moon further out. It still orbits Saturn, but now it's outside the Roche limit. This means it won't break into pieces. It's a fine balance we've got going on here in space. Let's mix things up a bit. Imagine we throw another planet into our model, something like Saturn. Keep an eye on what happens. Their gravity starts pulling them towards each other. This is space physics in action. As they get closer, check out this amazing moment. They crash into each other. With this crash and the stronger gravity, Saturn's rings might even get knocked out of their usual orbit. But there's more. What if this new planet we added is already moving? To start with, our original Saturn stays put. But gradually, the pull from our new planet starts to have an effect. And now, watch this. They begin this sort of dance around each other, showing us just how amazing gravity is when it comes to moving things around in space. It's pretty wild to think about, isn't it? Just a few changes in mass and speed, and we see all these big differences. And that wraps up our little space adventure today. We took a look at Saturn's rings and got our hands dirty with gravity. I hope you all enjoyed it as much as I did. Remember those of you eager to dive into these experiments on your own. Join our premium membership on Discord to gain access to this project and also a lot of other useful stuff. You'll find the link to our Discord in the description below. Don't miss out on becoming part of our creative and growing community. Thanks a lot for watching.